With the patient on a couch and their feet overhanging the end of it, look at the feet comparing for symmetry. In the forefoot, look for nail changes and skin rashes. Look for the alignment of the toes and any evidence of hallux valgus of the big toe. Look for clawing of the toes, joint swelling and callus formation. Look at the underside or plantar surface for callus formation. Look at the patient's shoes and for asymmetrical wearing of the sole, the presence of insoles or other signs of poor fit. Assess the temperature of the ankle and forefoot and check for the presence of a peripheral pulse. Just going to squeeze across your toes, tell me if it's sore. Gently squeeze across the metatarsal phalangeal joints while watching the patient's face. The tarsal joints. Ankle joint line. And subtalar joints should all be palpated for tenderness. Range of movement in the foot and ankle includes inversion and eversion of the subtalar joint. And can I ask you just to bring your big toe? Dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the big toe. And dorsiflexion and plantar flexion at the ankle joint. I'm just going to do that myself. These should all be done both actively and passively. mid-tarsal and subtalar movements can also be assessed passively. With the patient weight-bearing, toe alignment and the foot arch should be checked. Can you stand up on tiptoes? A dropped arch in a normal subject resolves when standing on tiptoes. Just turn away from me. The hind foot should also be observed. Achilles tendon thickening or swelling may be seen. There should be normal alignment of the hind foot and a disease of the ankle or subtalar joint may lead to a varus or a valgus deformity. Gait should be assessed, looking for the normal cycle of heel strike and toe off.